All right, we'll begin this course by taking a look at implementing a network troubleshooting methodology. And troubleshooting can be difficult at times, so it's important to follow a logical troubleshooting methodology whereby you essentially follow the same approach each time as best you can. So some common questions include, was the device functioning? In other words, did it work at any time? Or did it simply never work from the point that it was first taken out of the box, if you will? If it was functioning, then when was it last functioning? And has anything changed since the point that it was functioning to the point where it is no longer functioning? So clearly, you need to try to identify what the problem is. And the first goal of all troubleshooting is quite simply, what is the problem? And again, in some cases, that in and of itself can be challenging. But a user, for example, may have complained directly or communicated an issue to your help desk environment. But all networks and computing environments will require some sort of troubleshooting at some point in time. So again, gathering as much information as possible can help in terms of identifying the problem. So when it comes to gathering that information, try to implement a process with respect to anything to do with the incident. Now, this might require the use of any number of programs to make a proper assessment. For example, some simple tools such as IP config. If the user cannot connect to the network, you can verify what their IP address is. And of course, assess the state of the device upon arriving. Is it on? Is it functioning? Is it damaged? And in essence, try to ascertain as much information as possible about what the state of that system was versus what the state is now. You can also try to duplicate the problem, attempt to recreate it on scene, and document any steps taken during this process. In other words, did the steps that you implemented fix all the problems? You may be able to identify additional issues during this phase of the process, which of course you can use later on to try to determine if you can implement this same solution elsewhere should that problem arise again. Certainly question the users, talk to them directly, but typically only after you complete your initial assessment of the problem. And this is due to the fact that in some cases, users, of course, just don't have that much technical knowledge. So they might be trying to explain something to you, but they just might not know the correct term or even how to explain what the problem is. So typically assess things on your own, then talk to them and try to flush things out a little bit. They can absolutely be a good source of information, at least with respect to when things happen, what they were doing at the particular time. It can help to determine all of these issues with respect to when the problem was first discovered. So again, what was the behavior that they noticed? What programs were they using? Was that program ever used before or is it a brand new program? Anything along those lines. So then when it comes to identifying the symptoms, of course, you need to try to identify what was actually happening. Try to determine the effects the problem is having on that specific device or on the network. And this information, of course, can be used later to determine if the actual problems have been resolved. In other words, did the symptoms actually stop? Also try to determine the changes. What exactly did change? And is that change good or bad? And of course, determine if any new hardware or software has been installed that could be causing the problem. And of course, this is with respect to since the last time everything worked as it should. And finally, approach problems individually. Isolate and address each problem one at a time. Try not to focus on the biggest picture right from the get-go. Try to, in fact, do the opposite and just be specific with this particular problem and then sort of grow out as necessary. By focusing on one problem at a time, you can ensure that any changes that you do implement are working. But if, of course, they don't work, then that's the point where you do need to start considering things beyond the scope of just this one particular problem. But typically, try not to start too far out, too far in terms of scope, and then try to work your way back down. It generally should be the other way around. So hopefully you can come up with a process that works for you. Not every method of troubleshooting is suitable to every single person. Everybody has their preferences and the tools that they like and even the processes that they find work best for them. But generally, try to incorporate all of those aspects into a troubleshooting methodology, and you should be able to get through most problems.